Hello, everyone watching on YouTube. Welcome to our live Let's Chat, uh, hosted by the American Cultural Center, Algiers. First off, mabruk to anyone who finished their back test this week, any high school students that completed their back test. Huge academic accomplishment. I'm sure it was not easy, so really congratulations to you. Uh, today, we're talking with an American college student who's going to give us an inside look at what it's like to attend university in the United States. Uh, notice I use the words college and university. In the United States, those terms are pretty much interchangeable. I'm Emily Walker from the US Embassy Algiers, which is where the American Cultural Center Algiers is located. We also have American Cultural Centers in Oran, Constantine, Bashar, and Wargala. Once those centers reopen post COVID, I really encourage you to check them out. We have lots of cool things going on there. You can practice your English, you can rent movies, take out books and listen to interesting chats like this one. Um, in the meantime, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not a subscriber already. And you can also follow the US Embassy Algiers on Facebook and Instagram so you don't miss any of our announcements or events. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to our guest today. Grace Stottlemyre is a recent graduate of Baylor University in Texas, where she earned a BA in International Studies and French. She's currently applying to graduate schools and she lives in Waco, Texas. Um, Grace is actually completing an internship with Education USA, which is a US Department of State network of over 430 international student advising centers in 175 countries. One of those advising centers is here in Algiers, and it's run by Zobita, who is also on this call. Um, she's here to answer your questions about studying in the US, but before we get to those specific questions, I'd like to focus on Grace, who's going to share with us her experience of being a college student in the United States of America. So please do ask your questions in the YouTube chat, and with that, we're going to kick it over to Grace. Awesome. Thanks so much, Emily. I really appreciate that inter introduction. So I'm going to go ahead and share um, a quick presentation with you guys um, just about my experiences um, studying in the US. Um, and then afterwards, if you guys have any questions specifically about um, my experience or, you know, just general questions about being a college student, the journey um, to get to college or university in America, um, Zabita and I would be more than happy to answer those questions. Um, can you guys see my screen okay? It's good. Great, awesome. Um, so like Emily said, um, my name is Grace. Um, I just graduated in May 2020 um, from Baylor University. Um, and so these are just a couple of pictures <laughs> that I have from my time um, at university. I was um, heavily involved um, in some multicultural organizations um, and with our um, international students. Um, and so those are just um, some pictures of me with my international friends, um, which really highlighted um, some of the best moments, I would say, during my experience at Baylor. Um, so one thing I would say um, to consider, something that's a little bit um, different about, um, you know, going to university in the United States is that it's so huge that and there's so many different opportunities um, in terms of what type of university you want to attend, where, um, what size, all that kind of thing, um, is that it's really important to consider each of those different items. So um, for me, Baylor University is in Waco, Texas, um, which you can kind of see on the screen. Um, it's in between Dallas and Austin. Um, if you guys have ever heard of those cities, Austin is the capital of Texas. Um, it's a pretty big um, growing economy. There's lots of tech startups, um, STEM things going on there, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, so it's definitely like growing populations, growing cities, um, which was important to me um, when I was looking at colleges. I wanted to go somewhere where there was um, going to be lots of opportunity, a lot of jobs, new jobs coming up. Um, and so I would definitely say that's something important to focus on when you're looking at schools, when you're considering where you want to apply. Um, there's also um, different sizes of university. You can go to schools that are 400 students or schools that are 40,000 students. Um, and so there's a huge different range uh, of different sizes. 
Um, you also have public and private universities, which is a little bit different here in the United States. You have your public universities, um, which get um, a lot of money from the government. They're kind of run by the state, um, things like that. Um, and those are generally going to be your bigger universities, but you also have your private universities, um, which like the name, they're privately run um, and they take some funding from the state and government, but for the most part, um, they are going to be run off of students' tuition um, and um, like alumni donations and things like that. Um, you also have um, religious schools, if that's something that you're interested in, um, Protestant, Catholic, Muslim, um, and Jewish universities are available um, all over uh, the universe or all over the United States. Um, and location again is um, going to be kind of a big factor when you're looking at universities as well. You know, if you like the cold and you want to go where it snows, maybe head up north to New York or something. Um, but if you're like me and you hate the cold and you really like being, you know, warm in the winter time, you're going to want to head south, um, maybe to Florida or Texas um, or California is um, a great option. So something that is a little bit unique about um, American universities and the American university um, experience is gonna be, and of course you guys are probably wondering about academics um, and classes and all that kind of stuff, faculty um, at American universities. And that is gonna be quite different than you're gonna find probably at Algerian schools and Algerian universities. Um, in the United States for the most part, Something that a lot of schools try to do um, is try to keep class sizes relatively small. Um, of course, for massive universities, that can be kind of difficult, but that's something that a lot of universities really try to do because they place a lot of importance on the relationship between student and faculty. So it's your students and your professors. Um, and it's gonna be quite an informal relationship. So in Algeria, you might find um, that you know you speak really respectfully to your professor or you're, you know, you don't really approach them, things like that. Um, but in the United States, it's much more of a friendly relationship. You know, um, your professors are gonna invite you out to coffee, you know, invite you to their homes um, to have dinner or, um, you know, just get to know them. Um, something that's important are office hours, um, which, you can go and sit in your professor's office and just talk to them about, you know, if you have questions about class, you can ask them questions or you can just talk to them about life, um, which is something that's really special um, because you get to foster a relationship with them. Um, that can be really beneficial when you're um, trying to get letters of recommendation for a job after college or if you're trying to pursue um, a graduate degree um, or a doctoral degree, um, that's gonna be really helpful. Um, and so professors are really gonna, they're gonna want you to succeed. And so they're gonna try to work with you um, to understand concepts um, to help you with different aspects and areas of your life. If you're struggling with, you know, moving or, you know, being in a new place, they're a really great resource um, to help you with that. Class styles in general are going to be a little bit different as well. It's going to be less lecture based and more of a Socratic seminar type of class style, which basically just means it's a discussion based class. Um, and so that's something that's very different in the United States. You're going to be responsible for um, reading information and um, trying to understand it on your own and then coming to class and discussing it. Um, and so that's going to be really, sorry, go ahead, Emily. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, and I do want to talk about that because I do think the Socratic method especially is a huge difference between mm -hmm. international universities and U.S. universities. Um, but I'm interested, you said that you should consider all these things when picking a school. Could you tell us how you pick Baylor? You have so many universities you could have gone to in the United States. Community colleges, universities, Ivy League universities, different conferences, any state, you don't need to stay in your state, there's so much. So how did you decide on Baylor University? That's a great question. Yeah, thanks, Emily. So I'm originally from Florida. And so I knew when I was looking at schools that um, I had spent most of my life in Florida and I wanted to, um, you know, go somewhere different, find a new state, kind of explore a different culture, um, traditions, things like that. Um, so I knew I wanted to go to a school out of state. I also knew that I didn't want to go to a huge uh, state school, a really massive school. I felt like it would be a little bit too 
um, impersonal for me. I really wanted a more um, intimate college experience. Um, so I was really looking at like mid-range sized schools, which Baylor is. Um, I also knew that I didn't want to live in a huge city. Um, so I didn't really wanna, you know, New York University is right in the middle of New York City. And for some people that's awesome and they wanna do that and that's great. But that was not really something that I wanted to do. I wanted something that was more of a distinct campus location that was important to me as well. Um, what was helpful is uh, Baylor University is a Baptist university in the Christian tradition. Um, and that is how I was raised. And so that was another um, consideration that I took into um, that I, you know, thought about when I was considering universities, things like that. Um, so multiple different um, kind of aspects considerations uh, when looking at different colleges. And again, like I said, I enjoy the hot weather. So <laughs> Texas was great for me. Um, and how many universities did you apply to? I applied to about 12. Um, I, yeah, so I really, when I was looking, I had no idea. Um, all of these different universities kind of fit my general expectations um, and what I wanted. Um, but like I said, I just really, I really wasn't sure. Um, and so, you know, obviously you get acceptances and you get um, deferrals or declines. And so that obviously helps you narrow down your decisions. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I uh, pitch Baylor. Thank you. Yeah, I think something maybe people might not understand or people in Algeria might not know is we have so many options and then oftentimes we apply for all of these schools um, and then you get into some of them, you don't get into some of them. Some of them say you could get in next semester, which is a deferment. Uh, but then often if you live close enough, you go and visit the campus too to see if you could picture yourself living there. So it's really a big decision in picking university. Um, but there's a lot of resources available. So, okay, if you could get back to telling us, so you're at Baylor University. Yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, and so that was, again, like I said, um, with faculty, things like that, I was able um, to visit campus. I was able to meet some faculty and staff, and I just really appreciated. It'll be a little bit different for um, you students because you're in Algeria. Of course, it's going to be much more difficult to visit campus or anything like that, um, but there are resources um, available. You can do um, like video campus tours, or you can call professors, email them, things like that. So that's another option. But I was able to meet some professors in the department that I wanted to study. Um, I was able to talk to them about potential classes, things like that. Um, and so that was really interesting to me. And that was kind of what sold me in the end. Um, I really could see myself there on campus. I could see myself learning from these people. Um, and I really respected them and, you know, how they taught and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's, again, I would say that's something is, that's something that's really important um, when picking a university. Um, and so something else um, that I want to emphasize about American universities is when you um, kind of arrive onto campus, you can be a little bit overwhelmed as a freshman and then you guys will be international students. But after class, um, you'll have a lot of resources available to you. Um, so there will be academic support, there will be um, emotional support in terms of like counseling, um, there is are there going to be writing centers, there's going to be math departments, um, computer labs, things like that. Um, each university will kind of vary on the different kinds of support and the way that looks. Um, but that's definitely something that you can consider um, when coming to a university, you know, will this university provide the support that I need? Um, and because these universities, they really want you to succeed. It's that we're not trying to like throw you into a mix of people and just good luck. Um, they're really going to work with you and they want you to graduate. They want you to get a great job or go to a great graduate school and they're going to work with you um, so that you can reach your level of success. And so that's one of the reasons that they have um, these resources available. I took advantage when I was at Baylor. It was definitely challenging um, to transition from high school to college. Um, it's just a different type of, uh, you know, classroom setting and um, the work is definitely much more challenging. Um, and so I took advantage of 
every single resource that they had available. I went to the tutoring center, um, even if I understood a concept and I just wanted to go over it again, um, that they're just, and they're all free resources. I went to the writing center every time I had an essay due and they would look over it and help me with that. Um, and so it's really something that it's not something to be like ashamed of like, oh no, you know, I can't, I have to do this all by myself. You know, there are these resources available and you, it is really recommended that you take advantage of it um, because those will really help you succeed. Um, and then, so another thing um, that universities in the United States offer um, are gonna be after school um, extracurriculars. So this is something that's probably gonna be a little bit different than universities in Nigeria is that um, American universities really focus on a holistic aspect of a student. So yes, class is important, school is important, and studying is important, but also every other part of your life is going to be just as important. Um, you know, your physical fitness, your, um, your mental um, abilities, your emotional health, all that kind of stuff is going to be just as important. Um, and so American universities really encourage you to get involved outside of the classroom. And that's really a way that you can maximize your time and your experience here because they add a lot um, into um, your experience. So um, like you guys probably know, there are intramurals, which are really big in the United States. It's basically just like sports, casual sports that you can play. Um, at my university, Baylor, we had an, everything from football to ping pong, um, rock climbing. There's so many different, whatever you're interested in, they probably have it. Um, and so that's a great way. Can I chime in on here just, just uh -huh. so people understand the distinction because there's already some questions coming in um, about people who want to like play basketball in the United States. And they're probably referring to that they're very good at basketball and they like to get a basketball scholarship and be on a team at the university. Intramurals is something different. As Grace said, the keyword there is casual. You don't need to be great at a sport. You join because you just want to be active um, and meet other people. So she's saying like there's ping pong, intramural ping pong. That's not going to be an a elite college level sport, but, but something very fun to do where you just meet all these different people. And, uh, you know, so what kind of intramural sports did you do, Grace? Yeah, so I played um, volleyball. Um, in high school. And so that's something that I did um, with one of my organizations. We weren't great, you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but it was a great time. I think we won one game, but we had a really fun time doing it. Um, it was just really exciting. Um, and it's great to just kind of mess around with your friends and get a little physical exercise in that kind of thing, get a little competitive. Um, so that was a great time for Ever, sure. For sure. Is there a feeling, I mean, do some people feel like they must be studying at every time or was it socially acceptable to make time to do intramural sports and other things? Oh, definitely. I very, very encouraged. Um, if you, I am going to say, if you come to college, especially in the United States and you spend all your time studying and you're just in the library all day, every day, you're going to get really burnt out, um, which means you're just going to get so fatigued and it's, that's going to be really difficult for you. You're definitely going to need to set aside time, um, manage your time a little bit and just take a few hours out of your day and, you know, relax with your friends. If that is you know, going to a club organization um, meeting or playing sports or playing games with your friends or going on a walk, whatever it is um, that you want to do, um, getting involved in your um, passions outside of the classroom is really important um, because otherwise, you know, you're not going to really, um, you're not going to kind of be the best that you could be, if that makes sense. Um, so, to kind of continue on with that, they, we do have in the United States, we have student organizations, which you guys probably have here. Um, nothing new, um, but something that is a little bit unique in the United States is we, is we have so many. So at my university, Baylor, we have over 330 student organizations. Um, you can get involved in just about everything. We have everything. We have horse riding. You know, if you like to play video games, there's a video game club. Um, there's a camping club. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, and 
something that I believe every um, or almost every university in the US does is if you come to college and you look at the list of student organizations and you say, I don't want to join any of these. None of these look good to me. You can create your own. So um, if you're interested in something really unique, really special that um, you don't see anything that you want to do on the list, you can just create your own organization. And chances are there's going to be people at that university that want to do that exact same thing. Um, and so you can kind of grow that organization, um, grow your leadership skills, things like that, um, which is really important as well. Um, so that's a great opportunity. Um, I was involved in quite a few organizations, some multicultural organizations as well, um, which is really helpful for our international students. Um, if you guys come to the US and you're like, oh man, I am just sick of speaking English and eating hot dogs and hamburgers, whatever it is, um, I just need to speak my native language. I need to eat my native food from home. Um, that there are gonna be organizations and spaces for you to be able to do that. Um, to, for you to kind of relax and, you know, take a break, take a mental break <laughs> from whatever you need. Um, so that can be really, really helpful as well. So, yeah, that's kind of the Thank end you. of my... I think that that really just showed what a, like, specific individual experience university is in the United States. Mm -hmm. It is not a one-size-fits-all. And also... Um, especially Americans in the United States who go to university are very much encouraged to like find themselves in university to really just learn more about you and what you're actually interested in. That's why there's just so many opportunities. You can go to a new club, see if you like it. If you don't, you don't need to go again. There's not really too much pressure maybe for clubs and things. Just really a time to just find out who you are and find more of yourself. So exactly. You uh, summed that up really well. Thank you for that. So we have a lot of questions coming in um, about scholarships. Mohammed Lamin Ajuli asks if there's scholarships for people who just completed the back. Mahdi Gudam wants to know about scholarships and how we can apply. Um, Judy Laib wants to know, are scholarships fully funded? So I think it would be helpful, Grace and Zobita, you can jump in here too if you want to explain how scholarships work in the United States that you get into a university first and then look for the scholarships generally. So if you could talk about that a little bit, maybe your experience with scholarships too. Yeah, definitely. So Baylor University, since it is a private university, um, it does come with a pretty hefty price tag, um, which was something that was very um, concerning. I'm not going to lie for me and my family. We were kind of thinking about, oh, you know, how are we going to afford this? Um, and I'm sure that's a question that you guys are thinking about as well. It's definitely a little bit daunting. And American students are, we know that college here is pretty expensive. But the good thing is, is that there is a lot of scholarship opportunity. Um, and so what's going to happen is you'll get, you'll get accepted into um, an American university. And with that acceptance letter will come um, basically an offer of scholarship. And so that will be determined on, based on a couple of things, usually merit. Um, so if you did a great job in high school and you have a great GPA and you scored really well on exams, SAT, ACT, things like that, um, you'll usually get scholarships based on that. Um, and then there's going to be need-based scholarships. Um, and so that's something that you'll, um, will be determined, I believe, Zubi, you can correct me if I'm wrong, through the CSS, CSS profile. Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that I'm not telling you guys something wrong. Um, and so that'll be, um, because you're international students, that's how um, need-based scholarship will be determined. Um, and so that will kind of be your initial offer, um, but you can go further in that. And so I got an initial offer and I was like, okay, great, but I still am going to need a little bit of help. Um, so you have opportunities like work study, um, which can, is um, given by the federal government. And as international students, you are um, eligible for that. Um, you aren't allowed to work off campus, so you might as well work on campus if you um, need a little bit of extra money. Um, you can work up to 20 hours a week, which can be really helpful. Um, they also have different scholarships available in terms of departments, um, things you're interested in. So my international studies department 
um, gives out scholarships for students that need it. You, you know, you write an essay, you have to apply, go through the application process, things like that. Um, but I was able to get scholarships through that, through the French department, um, through a couple of organizations that I actually joined had scholarships available as well. Um, so I'm going to say it's not easy, but if you kind of put um, grind a little bit and you really look for them and you search them out and you kind of um, work hard on your application for all of them, it's definitely possible um, to get quite a bit more funding than you're initially offered. Um, and that can be a huge kind of make or break when you're deciding um, which university to go to. Um, very influential as well. So. Thank you. So I just want to highlight a couple takeaways there that Americans too, we see the price tag of a school in America and our jaw drops. It's shockingly high. It's so high compared to other countries. So just know that we think that too, and then we find ways to pay for it. But it is a very high number and we understand that. There's a lot of questions coming in asking like, uh, where can I get a scholarship for blah, 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 for this, for this. So just want to again point out that it works that you get accepted into an American university. And then you look for how you're going to pay for it. Then you look for scholarships. That university, um, Javier from Education USA is answering a lot of these comments in YouTube. And he's pointing out that a lot of universities have the scholarships. So if you get into Baylor University, for instance, then you look at their, you know, financial things that they offer to help students pay for college, and then you might find some scholarships there. Mm -hmm. um, so Bita, do you want to say anything else about how somebody might find scholarships after they get into university? Absolutely. Um, it is not, um, you know, it's not a process that just going to happen overnight and it's not something, a search that you have to give up on the first day. I can understand that it's quite a lengthy process compared to what we have here. Um, and so it does require that, yes, you find the universities that you want to apply for and those universities have um, scholarships and financial aid depending on who they want to attract. So sometimes they do have financial aid for international students uh, that you can apply for. Um, and it's good to have a combination of like resources or where you can get your scholarship. So you can have, let's say, 50% scholarships and then apply for 20% financial aid. And that all will add up to helping you, you know, pay for the whole uh, tuition and your stay. So it is complex, but it's not uh, impossible. Through the advising, we help you find, uh, we help share with you resources or where you can find those scholarships. So we do have on our website a list that is not comprehensive, but it's a list of some of the scholarships that universities offer or that some separate institutions offer as well. So yes, definitely. Some of them also, in addition to the scholarships that you mentioned, Grace, there are also athlete scholarships for uh, you know students who already play sports and who are excellent at what they do. And these universities, for example, look for basketball players, and so they might want to attract those type of students. Um, so, but those schools also look at international students. Um, I am not sure. Uh, it is possible because uh, we've seen it happen with, uh, with for example, um, uh, Hisham and I, who actually we did go to the U.S. and got a, an athlete uh, student scholarship. So it is not impossible. So I do get some uh, international students. Definitely it is competitive, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, and so as Zobita just mentioned, Education USA Advising. She works at the office here in Algiers, um, but you can sign up. You're only doing online advising right now. So you can sign up. We've just put the link in the um, YouTube chat. So you can sign up to meet with Zobita and kind of learn what your options are for going to school in the United States. So Absolutely. let's, while we're waiting for a couple more, if anybody has any more specific questions um, for Grace and like what, life is sort of like in the United States at university, please plop those in to the YouTube chat. But Grace, maybe you could say kind of the title of this talk is a day in the life of an American university student. So maybe you could sort of walk us through what a typical day looked like um, 
uh, pre, pre-corona, just normal when you were, you know, there on campus at Baylor University, what did your day of studies and socializing and life look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it, I guess it kind of depends on your class schedule, but most of my classes would generally be in the morning and early afternoon. Um, and so I would get up pretty early, head to class, you know, learn a little bit <laughs> for the morning, um, usually around noon or one. Um, I would head to the dining halls, um, meet up with a friend or two, um, grab a quick lunch before heading back to class. Um, usually if I had any, um, larger breaks, so if that was more than an hour, hour and a half, I, uh, would head to the library or I would find a quiet kind of study spot on campus and do some homework or review, um, for the class I just had or the class I have coming up, study for any tests or quizzes that I had that day, um, which is really helpful. Um, after my classes were finished, um, usually I would grab a quick snack and um, head to the library again, probably study for a little bit. And then after studying, I would head to my clubs and my organizations, um, my meetings, things like that. Um, so I would meet with my friends. Um, we would just do our club things, whatever it was, whatever club I was meeting with that day, um, talk about that. And then usually afterwards I would had to work. I worked as a tutor. Um, and so I would probably work for a couple hours after that. Um, and then at the end of the day, kind of head to the library, do a little bit of late night studying. Um, and then, you know, go home and do it all over again. <laughs> so it was a pretty average cycle, but it was a great time. So uh, and did you live in a dorm your first year at university? And do yeah, most right. students live in a dorm their first year at Baylor or do they live in a dorm all four years? So most students, so at Baylor specifically, um, you have to live in a dorm your first year. It's actually, um, they did some study that says you, the, if you live in a dorm, you get more involved and the better chance you have of graduating, um, which I'm not sure how that works, but I guess it works. <laughs> um, so I did live in a dorm actually for my first three years at a university. Um, and I lived actually in one of the international dorms. And so we, it was a dorm specifically for international students and students who were interested in um, studying, I mean, I was international studies, so that was kind of my cup of tea. Um, but who were interested in studying different cultures, learning about different kinds of people, things like that. Um, so we had events in that dorm specifically for um, our international students. We would have like cooking. We had a kitchen in the bottom um, or on the first floor. And so some students would just come down and cook the traditional meal and we would all kind of gather in the kitchen and eat it. They would explain how everything worked and um, we would just try new foods, um, you know, new traditions, new cultures, all that kind of stuff, which was um, really exciting, really rewarding um, for my experience. Um, some students decide to move off campus after their first year. There's generally gonna be um, at a university, there's going to be a lot of student housing right around campus. Um, so you can probably walk to campus. You probably don't need a car, um, which is kind of a concern of some students. Um, so yeah, I guess it also depends on where you decide to go to college. Um, but yeah, so there's definitely going to be living uh, housing opportunities on and off campus. Um, so yeah, if that helps at all. So yeah, that was a great question, Emily, but thanks. I appreciate that. You know what, I hate to uh, break the news, but we lost you for all of that. <laughs> oh no. I'm sorry, the connection just reset and it, it kind of, uh, it's reconnecting right now on YouTube. Oh gosh. Okay. I'm so sorry make sure that we're reconnected here. No worries. <laughs> yeah, we're reconnected here. So uh, okay, if I you were asking you um, about living in the dorms and you said that you have to live in the dorms for the first three years? Yes. Well, okay. So the first year and I decided um, to live in the dorms for my first three years. Zavita, sorry, you're going to hear this all over again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I lived in the dorms for my first three years. Um, I decided to live in uh, the international student dorm, um, which um, housed the international students and students who were interested 
in, um, you know, international affairs and different cultures and traditions and learning about those things, um, which is something that I was interested in. Um, there were different events for those specific dorms. So each dorm has its own tradition, um, different events going on, um, different opportunities to get involved as well, um, which can be really nice, a really easy way um, to get kind of connected as well. Um, for students that are wanting to move off campus, there's generally um, quite a bit of student housing around the campus. So you can live on or off campus. And Actually, Grace, everyone in the chat is saying they heard everything. So apparently it was only me disconnected. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. But now they really know. About they your really know. <laughs> I lost that there. Um, Okay, um, I want to ask you again, because this question just keeps coming in um, about, maybe Zobita can chime in on this. People are really asking, how much is it to study in the US? And they want to know how to pay for it again. So not to go on this ag again, but perhaps we can just sort of give a range of really what it costs to study in the US. Uh, Med El Amin BDR, he said, how much money is needed to study in America? So we'll talk about the ways to pay for it. But as we said, like, yes, you do see the price tag and it is shockingly expensive. Uh, when I went to university 12 years ago, I went to an in-state school. I was a resident of that state. Um, so it was cheaper. It was probably my total university cost was maybe $20,000 to go to school for four years, which is considered very cheap in the United States. Um, to go for four years. Yes, that was an in-state school and it was a while ago. Um, it's very cheap. Grace, if you're comfortable with saying actually like what was the price tag? I know you had financial aid. I don't even know that people know a range. So what, what was the price of going to Baylor University? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> it kind of hurts me to say it. I but, know, okay. um, so tuition um, costs is so they're going to give you kind of two price tags and it's going to be a little bit challenging to maneuver. So they're going to give you a tuition price tag, which is going to be significantly less than the total price tag. So the total price tag is going to include things like room and board, a meal plan, um, books, transportation, all those kinds of things. So if you see tuition, ask for, you know, just kind of like the full um, yearly total. Um, and so for me personally, tuition was about $45,000 a year. Um, and then total was about $60,000, $65,000 a year. Um, so in the end, that's about $200,000 for a college education, <laughs> give or take. Um, so yeah, definitely don't let that deter you. I mean, it's, that's a big number. Um, but like I said, the amount of like, you know, the amount of American students, we know the amount of students that pay full price tag are very small. Almost everyone. I, I don't, I don't know anyone that has paid the full price tag that doesn't need financial aid. Cause that's a huge number. Um, not everyone has 200 grand just in their pocket. Um, I wish, but that's just not the reality. Very, very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, the thing too. we didn't really touch on this, um, much, but there's are something called community colleges in the United States. Now, if you're a foreign student coming from abroad, you need to get into a, a college or a university, but some ways of deferring costs are taking classes at the community college that's in your area where you go. So maybe in the summer, you enroll in some classes there. Um, some universities count those as credits. Uh, so for instance, even though my university wasn't comparatively very expensive in the summers, I would take um, math classes or physical education classes at the community colleges and that, that saved it too. So the number is huge, yes, but there are ways to um, pay for it. You know, as Grace said, nobody really pays that entire price tag that exists. Um, so Bita, maybe you can talk about what you do in a Education USA advising session, um, how you help people pick which school, where do you start? What do you tell them? A uh, very good question. So when we get uh, students who want to work with us, so, you know, who want to study in the U.S., we usually start with 
uh, helping them define in their priorities. A lot of the time, students don't know what they want to study, where they want to study, um, what do you want to, they want to do in the future. So we go through exercises that help them define what they want so that they, what they to explore, uh, what they can pay for and what is it that, what type of financial aid that they need, all of those questions. And then we can go on and start researching universities. And because the choice is huge of, you know, schools and programs out there in the, in the U.S., we, the, knowing our priorities and knowing where we're going help us kind of narrow down those choices so that we can go like, no, this doesn't have, I don't know, the program that I'm looking for, this university is too expensive, this university does not offer financial aid, and that helps us kind of, you know, filter out the, the, the schools that are in for us. And, and then we can help we start, we can start working on the application and what is it that we need uh, in terms of documents, what, how do we write essays. So we do kind of go through the whole process as long as the students are committed um, you know, to, to do the whole work. It's a lot of work, but we're here to assist, to guide and to give a, the resources and to encourage when sometimes it feels like it's daunting and it's a lot of work. Thank you. Yeah, that's a, a really good message. Um, you know, you're there to assist them in doing a lot of work. The university system in the United States is epic. It's great. I would say it's the best in the world. There's so many opportunities. Um, but if you just went up to a random American and said, I mean, even some questions that are coming in the comments, oh, where could I find a school that does this, this, this? The average American doesn't know. There's just so many universities. And as Grace said, there's private universities, public, religious universities. There's just so much the average person doesn't know. So you really just have to do this research. And you can start by a simple Google search of what you want to study and where might be a good place to go. Um, and see, you know, where that place is located. As Grace said, location can come into a lot of it. Maybe you don't want to go to school in New York City because it's one of the most expensive places to live in the United States. If cost is a concern, maybe you want to go to a place that's more reasonable. It's a huge, a huge amount of research to do this. And, and Zobita is there to help, but everybody, you know, you have to start the process and, it, and it's a long process but ultimately worth it, which I think will bring us to our final question here. Um, Ali Hamid Abdul Salam just asked, so is it worth it? <laughs> so Grace, maybe you could address, you are graduating from Baylor University after four years. Was it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I know again, I'm biased. I did just graduate um, from university, but I would say 100% it's going to be worth every kind of struggle, every frustration you have with your application, every financial aid fight you have to have, every email you have to send. Um, it's probably, I mean, I know people say this all the time to you, but it's probably going to be the best four years of your life. Um, you're going to meet so many different kinds of people. You can make so many different connections. Um, not to mention the academics that are going to prepare you. It's on a whole nother level. Um, it's not any type of standard or average. Um, it's really going to push you. It's really going to leave you um, coming out of university um, ready to take on high positions, challenging positions, um, you know, even exploring um, more, you know, graduate degrees, things like that. Um, that are, is really just going to open so many doors for you. Um, I would say American universities offer a lot when it comes to just connections, um, you know, alumni, things like that. You can, you know, go on your, you know, university alumni page and be like, Hey, I need a job somewhere, or I need help doing this, this, this. And there are going to be people that say, Hey, come over here, do this. I can help you all this kind of stuff. Um, and so it is going to be, you know, a four year experience and it's going to be amazing, but you can carry that experience on for the rest of your life. You can carry on those connections, the people that you've met. Um, personally, I met a ton of international students. So when we graduated, everyone went all over the world, but now I know people 
if in, you know, every different corner of the world, if I'm ever in India or China or South Africa, you know, I have a place to stay. I have a connection there. Um, and you can do the same thing, which is just going to be um, an incredible opportunity for you, um, a really great experience um, and a time for you to develop as a human being, as a young adult, um, discover what you're passionate about and how you can make a difference and change the world and um, just be as influential um, and successful as you can be. Yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully some of you guys watching are too. Uh, again, if you want to learn more about studying in the U.S., you should definitely follow Education USA Algeria on Facebook. Um, that's where you can sign up for advising with Zobita. Also, if you feel like you're at the point where you really want to start looking at universities in the United States. They're happy to answer all of your questions. Um, I know a lot of people were asking about master's programs and graduate degrees. We'll do maybe an upcoming talk on those because today we were just talking about um, undergraduate studies in the United States. So again, I hope that you know people feel motivated going into school in the United States is an option. There are barriers and it's a lot of work, but it, it is a real option. And as Grace said, it was definitely worth it. So thank you so much, Grace, for sharing your experience. Best of luck to you uh, in applying to graduate schools and in all that you do. Thank you so much. And Zobita, thank you so much for being on the call too and talking to us about Education USA. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day. Bye.